We're about 252,000 in total debt, 68,000 in credit cards, 172,000 in student loans, and 13,000 in an auto loan. So even if you make no more charges with this card, if you make the own if you only make the minimum payment each month, we estimate you will never pay off the balance shown on this statement. The average American has a credit card debt of $6,500. For some people, it looks like a lot of money. For others, they don't care. This is nothing. They can refund it and fast. So they pile up debt, more debt every day, car payments, personal loans, new cards from the store. Let's go to Home Depot. Let's get that card. Let's get any cards we can get. Let's pay in multiple payments with Klarna. Let's pay later. Let's delay the payments. Let's have cash advance. That money is available after all. Why shouldn't I use it? A lot of Americans are thinking that way. 6,500 is only representing the average. The story we're gonna listen to today is this American guy that have an incredible incredible debt that is absolutely going to blow your mind. We're going to listen and comment together because the numbers are astronomical. I'm talking six figures, six figures debt as a young man in America. And you know what? As an immigrant, a lot of people are asking me, but how are they getting this money? Why American have so much possessions? Why they have all this money? How are they doing it? Because they, the banks are keep giving it to you. That's why the people abroad are not understanding. They keep giving it to you. They want you to drown so they can take every single dollar that comes in your pocket for the rest of your life. That's what's happening to the video we're going to watch right now to that person in that video. So please let's see this together and let's discuss hello everybody and welcome back to another finance friday with wyatt we're going to be talking about my credit card debt that reached sixty-eight thousand this month or this week and then we'll talk about my other debt here let me pull up the weekly spreadsheet Sixty-eight thousand dollars of credit card debt <laughs> what did i just say the average american has six thousand five hundred this guy has over 10 times the average American credit card debt just by himself. Just by himself. He has that over 10 times, 10.5 times. That's already crazy, $68,000. Let's see the breakdown. So this is what we're currently at right now, 68 down here, $68,497.80. I did look, it went up a little bit from last week again, you guys. It went up about $400. Last week, we were just under 68000 So that's not good. What you mean it's not good? How can you keep increasing your balance? You are in $68,000 debt. Like your debt should be going down from now on. It shouldn't be going up. I mean, I know it's not good, as he said, so he's aware of it, but it's just it's just insane. So people know that they're doing something bad for themselves, that they're running their future, but they keep running towards it. Why, why would you do that? Like, I don't understand. I hope he has good explanation to it. The reason, though, um, we got charged interest on one of our Bank of Americas and on the Sally Mae card, you guys, the balance just keeps growing because that's the card I'm using right now because I have no cash because all my cash is going towards my payments. And so I have to charge, you know what I'm saying? And so that card is almost gonna be at its limit and I don't know what I'm gonna do then, honestly. As you can see, I did make some payments. Some of them are gone in here, but we still have payments due before the end of the month. And then y'all, this fucking MX Platinum payment, $1,120, girl. I don't know how we gonna do it. But actually I called Amex this 
week and they have a financial hardship program a lot of you told me about it and so i did call um and it's what they're gonna do and i think i'm gonna do the program they're gonna wrap up all my debt so all three credit cards the platinum the preferred and the cash wrap it up in a bundle of debt put it at 9.99 percent interest rate and i'll make about a 231 dollar payment monthly until it's paid off which is about 60 months but you can pay it off early it allows you to leave your accounts open you just can't use them while you're in the program program um, but they also don't charge you the membership fees while you're in the program so like they won't charge the $700 a year platinum card fee or the $100 a year preferred card fee which I'm really happy about because that's gonna save me some money because my fee is coming up in March so I am gonna enter that program on um, this Tuesday when I get paid because you have to make an initial payment so that's that Wow over $1,100 a month just for one card minimum payments so for those who don't know that are not from america so when you have a credit card you have to make payments every month to show that you are willing to pay the balance so you're not just spending the money of the bank you have to show proof that over time you're going to refund that debt you're paying interest but they still require to pay what they call the minimum balance meaning that you're putting some money towards the debt although However, if I can say that this way, if you're only paying the minimum balance, strictly the minimum balance, in some cases, you might never pay off that card because the minimum payment is just to show good faith, basically, to the bank. And his minimum balance is so high, it means that the card is like the card amount, the card level is so high that they have he has to show that his minimum payment ha at, at a certain level to keep proving the bank that the bank that eventually he will pay it off he will pay that card off so they keep asking a minimum payment that is higher and higher because you keep spending higher and higher on us so we we want to make sure one day you will pay off so we keep raising your minimum payment and on the minimum payment you have interest that are accruing and fees and charges that is insane eleven hundred dollars like over eleven hundred dollars it's 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 in your monthly budget every single month like a bill you have the rent your electricity bill your food your phone bill and you have eleven hundred dollars of credit card minimum payment <laughs> i don't know if i don't know if you guys are understanding but for me that's that's just crazy and so right now what he's doing is actually a really good solution which is consolidating the debt on all his mx the three mx's that he has i think it's two or three that he said he has and they're going to put it at a less than 10 percent interest rate and he's not going to pay the fees um for like the yearly uh annual fees of those cars which is good because i mix platinum i have one it's 700 dollars a year which is really expensive and on the top of that, it has to do uh, only $200 payment for 60 months. So that's good. The, the only problem that I see with this, I mean, that which I don't know the balance, I mean, the, the card limit. So I don't know how much he owe completely, but is the $200 is enough to pay completely the balance of the card over the 60 months? Like, what, where is the bank funding? I, I don't know. You know what? I'm thinking this way because I always believe that American banks have a way to you up. And I don't know. I need to understand more how that process works. But if that works for him, hopefully it does. I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I have anxiety for him. Like, <laughs> he's like stressing me out. This is not even my account. Oh my God, let's keep going. Let's look at what I spent this week. So this is always a little bit hard to read because the numbers are smaller, but we can see that I spent, um, this week was short. I spent about $87 in gas. What was that? 94 on food so far. Um, I went out to a restaurant and actually I bought groceries because I did a dinner with one of my friends. So that's why the I spent a little bit more on food. Um, yeah, as you can see, we made credit card payments and then miscellaneous and then healthcare guys was 600 
$1,470. And that is for my health, dental, and vision insurance. That is going to be changing soon. I did sign a new job um, offer as a certified nursing assistant. Yay. Um, and benefits start 60 days after working. So they'll be employed or paid for then. So that bill's going to go away. And I'm going to thankfully be able to have health insurance without paying out the ass for it. Healthcare is so expensive in the United States of America. Guys, you don't understand. If you don't have a job that is participating or paying fully for your health care, monthly health care insurance is extremely expensive. And I applaud him for having one because honestly, there's a lot of people that don't even have one because they don't even want to pay for it. But I think that's very dangerous because if something is happening to you, the amount of money you're going to spend at the hospital without having any insurance to back you up is insane and can mm, you for life forever to pay that bill. Because trust me, those hospitals are not playing with you. They're going to want their money. If it's an emergency or something is broken, we got to chop something up or they're going to save your life. They're going to make you pay for it for a thousand percent. So it's good that he has one. It's sad that it has to be so expensive, but it's fully protected. And he said he has a job coming up like now that is going to take care of it. So as you see, like Americans, we always say, oh, yeah, they, they have so much money. They're high paid and everything. But which other country do you know where you need a six to seven hundred dollar insurance to take care of your needs of health? every single month we're talking about seven to eight thousand dollars a year just on your health net out of pocket that's a lot of money that's a lot of money that a lot of people can't afford so i do believe that there is some that are cheaper than the one that is choose because i have i have heard of them but if you want a good one one that is going to like not put you in a jo financial jeopardy if something's happening to you those are the prices, unfortunately. Um, let's go look at some more totals. So if we can see here, March or February is almost over. Let's compare here. Um, in February, we spent five eighty nine in gas, which is up from January. Six forty eight on food, which is about the same. That's not bad. One hundred and seven on storage. That's the rent on the storage unit that I have. My car, I spent about six hundred dollars on. Between, I had to get that three hundred and twenty dollar light fixed. Remember, and then I have my car payment. Cell phone four fifty four. Only about one hundred and eighty of that's mine. We're on a family plan. Americans with their car and their phones and their all. My goodness, I don't understand. <sighs> so I'm aware that the car market is not the same as Europe. I had a 1,000 euro car when I was 18 that I drove for three plus years. And I did 400, about two, I think two to 250, it was between 250 to 400 euros of repairs on that car total. And it's not luck. There's many stories like that. And the people with the people I grew up with that have like a thousand, two thousand maximum euros. When you come out of high school and you have your driving license, that's the type of car you have because you're bumping into stuff. It's not going to stay nice. You're just trying your driving skill. And in Europe, you have to learn stick shift. So I was learning, I was driving stick shift. So they don't give you like, you, you don't buy a nice car usually when you're younger in Europe, right? And it's kind of the same here. You're not going to drive like necessarily a nice car, but Americans have a tendency because of credit, because of money being given away <laughs> with high interest to go and take what they want instead of what they need. They take what they want instead of what they need. You need a car to go to work because there is no transportation. If there is no transportation in your city, because there is no transportation in your city, so you take a car that you can afford. Afford don't mean that you can pay the monthly plan based on your actual salary. Afford means is within the means that you have, within the net worth. If your net worth is zero, you go and you save for the money. You take a bike. <laughs> you do everything you can to avoid the car payment. Some of some people are not ready to sacrifice. Some people don't understand that most people in this world do two hours of transportation to go to work 
every morning and every night and take two to three buses is okay. There's no shame of taking the bus. There's no shame of walking on the sidewalk. There's no shame of riding a bike. There's no shame in that. Actually, you should try it. It will keep you healthy. Big backs, they will crack. <laughs> I'm telling you, try it out. There's a lot of people, they don't want to do those things because they're scared of how the society is going to look at them. They're scared of like, I used, like when I first came to America, I was in Ohio and I had a, a, tri a tricycle because I could have bought a car, but I decided to have a tricycle with a little metal basket in the back. And I was riding my bike <laughs> from my dorm to Walmart doing my groceries and going back home. Because why would I spend all my, my college fund money, the money that it was gonna be useful for any emergency, anything, just to the sake of having a car? That's not how I've been raised. I don't, I don't know that life. I'm not stupid. I, I, I bought the cheapest tricycle because I needed something to put my groceries on. And eventually, if I really had nothing, to uh, eat or I, I needed something, I would eventually Uber eat or something like that. And it was rare. Like, it's like, it's raining. There's nothing at the house. I can't use the tricycle. Okay, let me Uber eat, you know. It's once in a while. It's fine. It's still cheaper than a monthly car payment and insurance, tear and wear, repairs, all, all those things. People have to learn how to sacrifice in America. You can't always go for the immediate reward and satisfaction of what you want because the 30 40 60 hundred thousand dollar car on your 40 50 60 thousand dollar salary don't make sense even the 25 thousand dollar one don't make sense go for from five to ten fifteen thousand you can find great deals make sure it runs properly and it has just to take you from a to z and i'm telling you that from a car enthusiast Girl, I love cars. I would love to have a nice car. When I saw Lamborghini Urus, I'm living in Miami. I want to be in one. Trust me. It don't make sense financially. I don't do it. Rent one once in a while just to satisfy your craving if you want to. It will still be cheaper than owning it and ruin your financial li life. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm passionate, but y'all need to hear this. Americans, please listen. Interest is thirteen fifty four. Now it is going to be a little bit more. It's going to be closer to fifteen hundred because my Apple Card closes on the last day of the month, and the interest usually posts the next day. And I'm going to get charged probably about one hundred and thirty dollars in interest on that. So um, the interest for the month is probably going to be more total around fifteen hundred once it's all said and done. Fifteen hundred dollars of interest per month. Every single month, this man is paying $1,500 to the bank, a money that he will never see again in his life. Free money to the bank. Free money to the bank. Let me be the bank of this guy. He's giving this money every single month. $1,500. Can you imagine? It's not going towards his principal. It's not going towards his debt. For the people that are not in the United States that don't understand, this money is not going towards the 16, the 6,800. Ooh, sorry. This money is not going towards the $68,000 that he's owning. This money is going towards paying the bank because he's holding the money that he borrowed from them. That's where the money is going. <laughs> he's like saying, it's basically, I'm sorry, money. <laughs> this is how his interest is. I'm sorry, money. I'm sorry for holding the bank. I saw you to hold your money bank. That's the, I'm sorry, money. So this is the money this guy is having in his hands right now. And we all over here thinking like, it's normal. <laughs> $1,500 a month. That's somebody's rent. <laughs> Let me eat with this money. Oh, my lord wow student loan payments 107 dollars credit card payments 2100 dollars that's what i'm saying credit card payments 2100 dollars 2100 dollars are the minimum payments 21 2100 dollars are the minimum payments guys so this guy is paying 3600 a month of 
bank fees. 2100 towards is minimum, 1500 towards interest. This is insanity. Enjoyment $79, healthcare 838, that's my healthcare insurance and all my co-pays for all my pills I take. And then the gym was $24.99, Planet Fitness come and clutch. And the miscellaneous, we had $1,103 in expenses that is almost double January. So I don't know where the miscellaneous charges came from, you guys. It's like stressful or whatever, but let's take a look at the totals again. How do you don't know where over a thousand dollars of miscellaneous went from? Like where, where we're going? How? I mean, I mean, please. That's that's the root right there is the root of the problem. That's the root of the issue. It has no budget. Like you can't just say I don't know where the the thousand dollar life is stressful. Oh my god, you sixty eight thousand dollar in debt, my man. You have to wake up and tell yourself that every single dollar that I spend from now on has to be calculated. I have to be surgically calculated in my way of spending. You can't just have $1,100 of miscellaneous. Excuse me? <laughs> like, I mean, for me, life is stressful. I have miscellaneous. It's $50. I had like a little diet cook at the gas station. I had like a, I don't know, a little bag of chips here and there, and yeah, fifty dollars throughout the month. I will, I will be like, okay, miscellaneous fifty dollars. I can understand. Eleven hundred dollars. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where you spent it. Like you lost. I mean, it means that you're swiping every single day, three times a day, without even looking at what you're spending on. Like. You know how much effort it takes to spend 1100 without even noticing it? Come on. Let's be serious. So I know Credit Karma is a little bit behind, but we're about 252000 in total debt, 68000 in credit cards, 172000 in student loans, and 13000 in an auto loan. So I think it's actually a little lower since I made the payment, about 12900 So the, the, the debt is insane. The debt is crazy. The debt is super high. It's just, it's just, I mean, I, I say it, but it's absurd. A huge part of it, though, is student loan, $172,000 of student loan. For the people that are not Americans watching these videos, you guys have to know, in America, school is extremely expensive, extremely expensive, and a lot of people don't know that about America. They come here and they think that they can just go to school like in Europe or other part of the world where school is very affordable. Even if you're going to private school, it's going to be like maybe 10000 a year. You can pay that. You can pay that off like with hard work over time and etc. Even if you do five years and you have $50,000 of debt, you can still pay 50000 I agree. Like it's, it's, it's high, but it's okay, I will say. Here, you can have school that asks you hundred thousand dollar a year yes that exists and fees for education for you to get a job and get paid that is crazy this man has a hundred and seventy two thousand dollars in student loan and as we've seen with his finances is probably not working in the field that he's like studied for because if you had if you were it will make it will be making way more money and it will be able to pay his debt off way faster but his budget is showing that it's not the case so he probably have a degree in a field that is not high paying but the school was extremely expensive for and it happens all the time that's why i feel like some americans are being blindsided about what education really is and the purpose of it Nobody shows you data of what are the jobs that are in look and search in the next five to 10 years. When I went in business school, I had charts that were distributed to us for the in next coming up top jobs that are gonna be searched in the next five to 10 years. So you can choose the direction you wanna orient your degree or your specialty the words do things so you make sure you find a job 
like we don't just give degrees to give degrees in america i feel like they give degrees to give degrees just to charge you a degree and it's crazy the amount of people that have degrees that have absolutely no market for absolutely zero market for Let's just talk about it. I am speaking with a bankruptcy lawyer named Jay who has been referred to me by many, many lawyers. He's supposed to be the student loan discharge king. So I'm going to talk to him about that. But I also am going to enter this Amex program. And like I said, save some money. I called all the other credit card companies. They have no helpful like programs like Amex does. They do not care. They were like, nope, if you can't make the payment, you can't make the payment. We can't help you. We can't lower your interest rate, which sucks because I've been a member with some of these banks for like over 10 years. You'd think they could help you out, but they won't. Um, yeah, so it's a little stressful, but um, I, I'm going to start my new job and like work overtime. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Good news. He's starting a new job and he's going to work overtime. Great more income coming in because this guy absolutely needs something some water it, it looked like the desert with like the sand around him and not a drop of water to you know <laughs> to satisfy his thirst that's how i look at him so i feel like this job is definitely going to help him to at least increase his income a little bit and give him some buffer to give him some room he needs that right now asap and that's good that he's willing to do that it shows that at least he wants to work towards his debt his spendings don't show that but his actions of looking for a job and having a supplement income does shows that so i am um, i am still having some empathy for him and do uber on top of it so i'm gonna wait to make the final decision about filing bankruptcy until i reevaluate what my income is over the next couple months and then see if it is even a possibility to be able to pay down this debt um so yeah that's all for this week i hope you guys enjoyed it recap um i hope i hope next week i have better news for you guys that the debt has gone down i'm really trying really hard not to spend money so it just pops up but yeah so well the fact that he's saying that he's really trying to not spend money i still don't believe that because the 1100 dollars of miscellaneous don't show that at all but i am very <laughs> shocked by this whole video like i haven't seen a debt like this like in my, in my life this is this is crazy this is this is crazy this is like the epidemic of america <laughs> i would love to see his statements to see what he's really spending on and what's been happening for him to be in this situation over time um maybe some things happened to him that wasn't his fault i, I don't want to put all the blame on him and everything but i do believe to a certain point you making choices that put you in certain situations and you decided to not get out of them by being responsible and um some people are mature enough to agree and decide to walk the steps towards um healing because <laughs> you need to heal from that you know because if you don't heal the behavior no matter what happened you're still gonna go back and fall you know if you don't understand what you're doing and why you're doing it you're not gonna understand um when you're going to be in a better situation you're just going to get back to it because you don't know what it feels like or what's the purpose of being better you just know like right now you just know that he's in a bad situation and you gotta go better but when you get better what's the goal of being better if you don't know what you're getting better for so i think there's a lot of like self-reflection that has to be done right there um i mean i'm not a psychiatrist or anything like i don't have any of those things it's just my personal opinion on that situation but it's it's just it's just wow it's a lot this this guy is going through a lot um i, I would love to know if you guys are going through this type of things i want to show you another video about a bank statement for you so I, I want you guys to understand what i mean when like the debt sometimes cannot be refunded please look look at this video and then We'll discuss. Look at this credit card statement from Capital One. Balance is $4,107.82. Minimum payment is $97. Now, look at the minimum payment warning. This is on every credit card statement, by, by the way. It's required by law. 
Even if you make no more charges with this card, if you make the own, if you only make the minimum payment each month, we estimate you will never pay off the balance shown on this statement because your payment will be less than the interest charged each month. If you make more than a minimum payment each period, you will pay less in interest and pay off your balance sooner. For example, if you if you instead pay $159 per month, you will pay off the balance shown on the statement in around three years. Now, this is only $4,107. Do you understand that many people are in $30,000, $50,000, $80,000, dollars in credit card debt? $200,000 even? $300,000 I've seen? Our guy is in $68,000 of credit card debt. Do you guys understand now what I'm saying? It means that some of the cards, his minimum payment was $2,100 a month. $2,100 specifically. $2,100. So $2,100 are going towards Two thousand one hundred minimum payments. So some of the cards, even if he pays only the minimum payment, if they not add the like if the minimum payment is not equal or over the interest being charged, he will never pay off the balance because there is zero going towards the principal. He is paying interest for life. Do you guys want to understand the principle? So it means like if the interest is Ninety-seven dollars, right? And your balance is four thousand. It's every single month you're paying. I'm I'm just gonna put the interest as a fixed interest of ninety-seven dollars for this to simplify this video. Is the interest is ninety-seven dollars, and you're paying only the ninety-seven dollars interest every single month, and you're never paying towards your principal. You will never pay off the actual debt because you're only paying the interest. So it means you will pay forever the debt. <laughs> so that's why it's so important to always pay over the minimum balance. Always look at how much is going towards your principal. It's so important. Our guy has $1,500 a month of interest, $2,100 of minimum payment. God knows how much is going towards the actual balance the actual principle that it has to refund. So at the end of the day, you never wanna do the minimum payment on your credit card. Super important, always pay more. Really and truly with your credit cards, you wanna pay off the balance in full each month. Just to remind you, y'all have a happy holidays. Talk to y'all soon. Every single month you wanna pay your balance in full. The balance is how much you spent that month you paying it off at the end of the month if you spend four hundred dollars on your card at the end of the month when you receive that little paycheck just like it's a bill due you pay that four hundred dollars you pay it you don't even think about it like oh i'm gonna catch up next month i'm no matter what happened pay that balance in full because we we live in the world like Every, there's always something happening oh my god i need some bad something to, for the kids something happened to my car i, I had an emergency i had to something happened to me health wise I, I had to pull a teeth something is there's always something there's always something happening and then you never pay that thing off never how are you going to do if you never actually putting the effort every single month to pay what is due to better your financial future you will never so please make an effort always pay your balance off please i mean it's your life i'm just i'm just i'm just over there talking on youtube you know what i mean <laughs> i want to show you a last video of somebody explaining how you get in so much debt she went herself in sixty thousand dollar of credit card debt and went out of it please let's watch together how do some of y'all have twenty seven thousand dollars in credit card debt 
I just want to know. Years ago, I was in $60,000 of credit card debt, so I'll tell you exactly how that happened because I also never thought that I would get there, and it really does happen kind of fast. So the number one factor for me was the fact that I had so much anxiety and shame around money that I would actively avoid my finances. Like, I couldn't even look at my bank account, let alone sit down and make a budget. So all this in money advice and how to get yourself out of debt and whatever was kind of irrelevant to me because if I couldn't even get myself to the computer to, like, open my bank account, I couldn't do the rest of it. And because I didn't have a budget and was avoiding my finances, it was really easy for me to not know how much I was spending month to month on like subscriptions and various expenses that you accumulate over time. Plus this was like the worst mental health period of my life. So my ADHD was rearing its ugly head and I was impulse spending. I also just had a very nihilistic attitude of like, it doesn't even matter, whatever, I'll just deal with it later. But the thing that you don't realize when you first start getting into credit card debt is how quickly the interest compounds over time. And this is how you can go from having like 8,000 in credit card debt to 27,000 or 60,000 or whatever it is, because all of your cash is now going to two things. It's going to rent, maybe a few different utilities payments that you can't put on a credit card. It's going to your minimums, right? And your minimums on your credit cards are growing every single month, even if you don't put a single new charge on that credit card. So when all of your cash is going to your credit card minimums or even paying off a little bit more than your minimums to try to like get ahead, you're still having to put a lot of your purchases on credit cards because you're out of cash. So that combined with the money avoidance to me was this perfect storm of like, I just didn't know how quickly debt would accumulate once it started. Like once the ball started rolling, it gets away from you really fast. So the question is not how does someone end up with that much debt? The question is like, what are the patterns that got you into debt in the first place and that are keeping you from dealing with the debt? Because those are going to be the same patterns that turn this into like a wildfire that spreads really quickly. I as you see, it's a pattern, it's a behavior, it's, it's a trait of character. It's you always going back and spending on that card without having a plan or a strategy with your money. If you don't, you would just emotionally spend because you don't know what's your money, is, where your money is going. You don't have any purpose for it. You don't have a strategy to get out of debt. So if you don't have a strategy for your money, then the money is going to strategize for you. And when the money is coming from where? The bank. The bank is going to strategize for you. And what are the, their strategy? Compounding interest. They want to be like, ah, all right, you keep spending. It's okay. We're just going to charge you more. <laughs> the sorry in interest fee. And it's a compounding interest. And those are growing extremely fast every single month. So you remember the example I was giving earlier with $97 fixed? Tell yourself that that $97 is growing every month at a 25 30 35 40 percent meaning that you come in a month and then the 97 dollars is now a hundred dollars 103 dollars 105 dollars 150 at the end of the of the year the 97 dollars is becoming 150 dollars of interest and you just don't understand that i used to pay 97 dollars for my card interest how am i paying right now 150 dollars is compounding interest every single month that you're not paying any balance or like any principal the compounding interest is accruing so you're paying forever that's why it's so important to pay your credit cards off as fast as it, as you can and it's getting very dark here i'm gonna be finishing with this video right now thank you so much for listening i would love to know what do you think about this subject because it's really really interesting i'm always fascinated to see how americans are spending their money because this is not the culture i grew up in i came in america with like <laughs> an idea and every day i'm discovering that it's not what i thought it was there is so much to so many layers you know to how things are being done in this country money wise education wise society wise culture wise it's so interesting so if you're from here please give an insight about how do you deal with this credit card game and if you're outside of the spectrum from another country please let me know what you thought about this video i think it's very interesting um, to see how americans spend their money and let me know if you learned something i would love to know that and let's discuss together have a good day see you soon